All right. Welcome to the CESS meeting. It's November 2nd of 2022. Today, we're going to talk about error propagation through shadow realms and Carity. Please take it. Okay, so this topic is a continuation of a conversation, a pull request that is open on the on the spec for how we will be able to propagate errors across different shadow realms uh, to the incubator realm and vice versa. And the discussion has been around um, what should we specify or what should not be specified in 262, consider that the error properties are not specified today. Um, that in combination with uh, another uh, proposal from Matthew where the um, where we make very explicit uh, normative definitions in the spec um, to prevent objects to be leaked from one realm to another that seems to be related to this um, when it comes to error stack and the name of the error and the message of the error, those are not specified, but those are considered um, data and we need to decide whether or not that data is important to be contained in one side of the fence or the other. That kind of the, the topic. Okay, so um, so with regard to the the implementations, the I think we can divide the 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 existing implementations um, in terms of their concerns into basically V8 and everything else. Uh, and the, the the reason I say that is that V8 has this whole complicated non-standard, um, you know, prepare stack trace um, and, uh, and associated um, APIs that have this structured form of stack trace that contains object references, in, in, in particular references to methods and references to the this arguments of the calls. Um, and uh, so the, and, and therefore the prohi prohibition on mixing heaps between um, mixing subgraphs between uh, shadow realms uh, would apply to that. And, um, uh, but for everybody else and for perhaps a restriction on the V8 thing that they might consider, but at least for everybody else, there is no object sharing that happens as a result of error stacks, there is only information share. Um, so, uh, so, the, so I think the, the question, so there's, oh, and then there's the uh, tactical issue, which is even though there are, there is no error handling, there's no error stacks that are normative in the spec at, today at all. And the, um, the proposal that's in flight is, I think, still at stage one and certainly is mostly silent on everything that we care about here. Um, uh, the real open question for us is um, uh, what, what effectively, what advice do we give to implementers? Because all the implementers have some kind of stack. And even though the stacks have no normative status, they're going to do something in order to implement shadow realms, which are now at stage three. So everybody wants, wants to implement them. And then whatever they do implement with regard to stack handling, uh, that becomes legacy that we then cannot break without breaking the web after that point. So there's, there's a big tactical issue here. In general, there's two different uh, ideas here. One is, or point of view at least, one is um, implementation. The first one is that implementation should be free to expose the stack uh, of, um, should it, free to expose string stack traces that contains entries of other realms, of other shadow realms. Um, the other one is, opinion is that like they should those should be censored mm -hmm. uh, yeah but 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 that one matthew is is with respect to information um yes, correct and, and i'm only talking about information here okay right. information in stack uh traces string string stack traces um my concern is 
a membrane is in a good, it's easy for a membrane to reconstitute uh, full stack traces across where it's extremely difficult to censor stack traces. Uh, censoring stack traces means replacing the error constructor uh, and, uh, and having different approaches based on the implementation because stacks are not standard to go in and make sure uh, any error object that is constructed never uh, shows a stack uh, property that contains another realm's uh, stack traces. So All right, I think I think people like get that brain around uh, Shadow Realm at least to censor stack traces if you are interested in that property, where I, otherwise I, you might not need to. Matthew, I didn't quite get what you were saying. You're saying that it's difficult for a membrane to do the censorship. No, I'm, 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 I'm saying I'm saying that you have to actually create a membrane if you want to censor stack traces in in the Shadow Realm. I thought you were. I thought you were also making the point that that Kariti was just uh, repeating, which is that you're also making the point that even if you build such a membrane, it's difficult for it to censor, whereas it would be easier for it to stitch back together. Correct. I, so I'm not sure what do it, what you're leaning toward. I, I'm leaning or, towards that engines shouldn't uh, uh, reveal stack uh, trace information uh that for stacks that doesn't that belong to a shadow realm that is not uh i mean the, the same kind of rules like if you're in a shadow realm uh you don't contain uh, stack traces that are not your own shadow realm uh and and the counter argument that we have for that and i'm in the other camp i think at this point i rather prefer then you to not do any censorship and uh would be that it's not super difficult for a membrane to already to to do a censorship because membranes already at least the ones that we have already uh implement the censorship process for errors and membranes no, they, 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 what censorship of information i mean we've got information in the uncensored stack trace that that potentially comes from multiple realms uh, membranes right now do no information censorship so the one that we have, it, it, it produces an error, an, a, an error that does not contain information about the inner pieces of what happened inside that side of the membrane, at least the one that we use. So it's already censoring and it's not censoring by uh, analyzing the error stack because that's more difficult as Matthew was saying, the, the stack is very different from browser to browser, yada, yada, what we do is, we, we throw a new error and then we go oh. with the message of that error to cut out whatever was left behind. So it cuts out uh, some of the pieces of it. So you only get to know certain information yeah. that we provide. So that's the kind of thing that we do. But my point is that membranes can do this. Membranes, some of them are doing this today. And the, the okay. browser seems to, the implementer seems to be not interested on censoring chip because okay. for there, there, many use cases you do want to have the full stack because you're not you're not worried about leaking such information because it's your own you control everything you're not really doing any any special um okay Let's, so, so i'd like to probe that the the technique that you talked about is only for throwing errors, not for creating errors and looking at them. So if I'm deep in a, um, you know, if, if I've received control, I'm an object in some realm and I've received control, uh, but the, 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 at the point that I've received control, these, you know, I'm already deeply nested in a synchronous cross realm stack. Um, then I create an error. I don't throw it, I just create it. And then I do error.stack. Do I see the, uh, the um, stack information from the, um, let's say, let, let's just take the immediate uh, call frames from the, um, the other realm that called into this realm? 
Yeah, remember you remember that the membrane controls the error constructor. The membrane controls the error constructor. Well, so how? Yeah, how do you? That, that's what I'm saying. You have to go in and replace the error constructor uh, in in each realm, and you actually have to wrap shadow realm uh, prototype. You have to wrap the shadow realm <coughs> prototype yeah, too. It's not uh, easy. It's not easy. Yeah. It's not easy. Okay. <laughs> So, so, so if you agree it's not easy, then we're then you 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 agreed with Matthew's starting point, which is uh, censorship is not easy. Right, but then the 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 flip side of the thing is that when you do want to provide the developer, you're not doing a membrane; you're just spinning up a shadow realm, and you want the developers to have that experience where. If there is an error in any part of the code that they are executing, you want to provide the full stack. So it's a, a developer activity hat on right now. Uh, you want to see the full stack. You want to see what's going on. Uh, oh, on. The, 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 there's two different things. There is the developer experience of using a dev tools to see a stack, or there is uh, right. uh, other, there is programmatic access. And those are two different things. I am. Yep. I have never advocated for. No, no. I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the dev tool. I'm talking about programmatic. I'm getting my error. I'm serializing that error and send it over to my to my collection mechanism for errors to report error and so on. So I lose the 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 stack of where the error occurred because it was censored by this this shadow realm. So most likely in an application, if you have any kind of con error control that you log and you want to go back to them uh, and, and plot them and, and be able to inspect what's going on with your app, you will be putting uh, error controls at the main realm in the window, then you're sending them over to a server. Um, if I have a shadow realm, then I'm, and, and the shadow realm is doing censorship, that error has uh, no information that I can really be useful for me if I do the dev tool, yeah, the dev tool can do all the all the things, all all these extra steps to provide a lot more information about what's going on, really. But uh, it feels to me that this separation is it, it is what Jordan was alluding to, I believe, which is in many cases you don't care about censorship, and when you care, you probably should bring a membrane to do the censorship for you. <laughs> So I'm, I'm, I'm puzzled by your use of the term membrane here because membranes don't re re replace error constructors. Membranes are between things. Yeah, but there's logic in the membrane that you, if, if, if you really want to put censorship across the different side of the membrane, you should be able to do so. How about- Wait, 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 but, but, uh, uh, sorry. The, the so, so first of all, Forgetting shadow realms for a moment, in general, membranes are something that's placed between things where the, the, the party placing the membrane between things doesn't necessarily have uh, you know, a privilege over the things that they're placing the membrane between. So you know, in order for me to place a membrane between Alice and Bob doesn't mean that I already have the ability to replace Alice's or Bob's error constructor, right? Alice, Alice and Bob and, and, and myself might all be mutually suspicious, but Alice and Bob don't yet have any contact to each other. I have access to both Alice and Bob. I decide to put them in contact with each other through a membrane. I didn't, that, the fact that I can put them in contact through a membrane does not mean that I could replace Alice or Bob's error constructor. So we're talking about something more powerful than a membrane. I think you're, I think you, you Caridi, are thinking in terms of the mere, the near membrane, which is a lot more mechanism than a membrane. Yeah, I'm certainly biased on that one. Yeah. Um, I. So Alex raised a few questions. Uh, I'll quickly address them. So could this be a. a Point where shadow realms and compartments are uh, different according to stack trace. Uh, I think so because uh, errors are shared within a uh, compartment. So uh, we are not, I, I don't think anybody has looked into censoring uh, 
uh, stack traces uh, across compartment boundaries. Uh, so we need we need to be very careful about what you can and cannot, what can and cannot differ across compartment boundaries. Uh, for an error instance, when you say error dot stack, there's nothing compartment oriented about that. The, the, there's no, there's there that cannot be dependent in any way on what compartment it, it, it's happening in because it's not happening in a compartment, it's just happening. Right. It's, it's so the, um, so the, the, you know, the, the SES, uh, the SES mm -hmm. shim, its behavior with regard to error stacks, which at some point we need to discuss uh, what's, what spec proposals that behavior should appear in. Um, uh, but, what it's doing is that the uh, error instance dot stack is giving you back no information, and to get the it's stack, right? That yeah, um, right. So the so for so in a in a post lockdown world, error instance dot stack gives back no information, and all of the information to get error stacks has to be. Um, either hung off the global or hung off a separate per compartment error constructor, or a, so, an error constructor that could be separate per compartment. And in and particular, it, in CES, differs between the start compartment and everybody else. All constructed compartments in CES by default share this share a safe error constructor that gives you no information. Okay. Um, I think this is a decent segue back to Shadow Realm and what I wanted to mention. Uh, I think we keep mixing two things here. We, we keep mixing creating an error instance and looking at the stack and uh, having a, uh, a error bubble back to the, um, uh, across the callable boundary and being able to observe the stack information across. Uh, and those are actually two different things. Um, if you are within a shadow realm, I argue you shouldn't programmatically be able to look at the stack outside of your shadow realm. Um, now, I understand the use case of reporting tools that are usually on uh, attached to like a global error handler in uh, in the start uh, uh, in the incubator realm, uh, and how that should have informa sufficient information to report. What happened there if an error is thrown inside a shadow realm and bubbles back through a callable boundary? What you're saying is that uh, the <coughs> the incubator realm should have enough should be able to observe enough in stack information on whatever is thrown uh, to be able to understand and report. And that might be acceptable. It might be acceptable that when you cross the callable boundary, out of the things that are, uh, the information that is carried over, we carry over stack information from the shadow realm into the start, uh, um, uh, into the start uh, uh, the incubator realm. There is a little bit more complicated questions though, is that if you have nested, uh, if you have a uh, incubator realm uh, and the shadow realm inside, that creates another shadow realm inside and now you throw an error within the innermost shadow realm. The stack, uh, should the stack of whatever is thrown inside the middle sh uh, shadow realm contain information about uh, the shadow realm that's contained within it. Um, so is this a general property of uh, stack information cro crossing the callable binary, or is it a uh, is it something specific to the uh, the uh, uh, incubator realm? I, um, so I don't think we have that distinction today in the spec. I don't remember that distinction of incubator ROM or the shadow ROM or the nested shadow ROM and the incubator ROM of those shadow of that nested shadow ROM. I don't think we have any distinction there. We could make that distinction. I, I like the idea because uh, then it's what Chu was saying. Like we 
you, you, I'm creating the shadow realm, ain't I? So I, why, why I should not be able to see what's going on there? Um, of course, there are, there are cases in which in a single shadow realm, ain't and the incubator for that is still complicated if you have multiple calls in between them. So if, if you're calling into the shadow realm through a callable, and then the shadow realm is, has received a callback and calls that callback, that goes out and then the callback tries to do something and throws an error, then what? What, what is the information you're gonna get? Well, you're gonna yes. lose part of that information so it kind of defeat the purpose of, of having well, the full information there. Doesn't have to. That's the thing. Um, the, the hosts the, can, since stacks are host control right now, um, the error that crosses, the, the thing that crosses over uh, the callable binary um, can include private information that can be fetched again if it crosses another callable binary. So you throw an error inside a callback that goes back into uh, a, 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 a another realm. Um, oh, so you're when, you, that when you when you get uh, something thrown uh, on, so you have a uh, blue the incubator realm. Uh, I, I, I get what you're saying. I get I get what you're saying. Yes, we can have an internal internal uh, slot that points to the arena error. And then from the perspective of who is seeing that error, you, you might censor or not. The new error that you're gonna create on that side of the of the membrane. And, and I'm saying the I'm not saying the membrane should do that. I'm saying the host is, is free uh, to do that. So uh, let, yeah, let's just go through what, what not the host, but the callable boundary. So the, the code that we're at, the, the spec that we're working on understands when it needs to create a new instance of an error and place some information in that new instance every time that the error is crossing the, the callable boundary. And at that point, you have access to the error that needs to cross. And if that error has information about the original error, then we might be able to get that information out of the original error rather than the already wrapped error of some sort. Um, and so we could do some of that to allow one side to access the full stack when the other side might, might have uh, access to a sensor stack. Um, now, there, there are a couple of issues with that approach. That I, I like that approach, first of all. I like that approach. It, it kind of allow the owner of the shadow to get access to everything. And then uh, the, the shadow is censored uh, in a way that it can only access certain information. Uh, so I like that. I think people will be okay with that, uh, especially because from within the shadow, you can really do much. You, you might be able to, to lock that error into a server, but normally you would do that outside, as you mentioned. Um, so the, the, the issues with that is that, uh, we don't have the sense of who the, the, the incubator is. So we'll have to introduce that notion to the spec, which I don't know how complex that will be to, in order to understand that the error is coming from, from- We don't have to. The HTML has a notion of who uh, the incubator is. Uh, and I think we can probably spec it so that we just, construct a graph uh, and put restrictions on, on, on who can access. Yeah, uh, so I think that, that would be fine, uh, but it will be, it will be, so, um, okay, so we'll, I'll look into what, what, what the implications are there. As, let's assume that we have the ability to know who the, co the incubator is, who the child realm is, and then therefore we can make that decision. So that's one issue. I think that, that I don't think that's impossible. I think that's perfectly possible. How complex it is, I don't know. Uh, the second issue is a little bit more tricky, um, and I'll put an example of it. 
and then we can talk about the actual issue. So if I have a, if I have a, and I think you touched on it, if I have a incubator realm that creates a shadow realm, and then the shadow realm creates another shadow realm, and the nested shadow realm throws an error that is captured by the, um, the uh, incubator shadow realm, you haven't crossed the boundary to the outside, to the actual incubator. So what kind of information will that error contain that will be censoring information that might be about the incubator run, which is the one that initiates the call to a function two levels down or something like that. So you, you're not really crossing anymore that boundary. You haven't get to cross that boundary. And then what? What kind of censorship you apply there and base it on what? Because you don't know that there is another incubator outside that is trying to censor what what you're what you're supposed to see. Yeah. So I think there's two question is whether uh, when a shadow realm creates a nested shadow realm, should it see stack information from inside that shadow realm? Um, I, I I think it should. I think it should, but that's not my question. Okay. Though. My question is: the incubator receive a function that cross two boundaries, so it crosses twice. Which, by the way, it's just going to be a, obviously a different function because it's a different realm. Yeah. Uh, but it's bound to the same realm, which is the 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 INA one. And now it calls that thing, and that thing throws an error. But there is a um, let me see. So if the incubator one is the one invoking that function directly, the middle one doesn't doesn't capture that error. It goes straight into the top, which you can censor. But it's not you, it's not your incubator anymore, because we don't track that. I, I, maybe that's why you're saying that you need to build that graph. Yes. And you need, think, you need to be able to graph that may be n nested. Okay. So does that mean that then we don't specify this behavior? We just um, define what we think should be the behavior that the host implement? Because we don't have a stack in the spec, so we can really yeah. do nothing about the stack. So I could we talk can... about what what kind of censorship do we want to apply when and then let the implementers do that work. Is that what you were thinking? I was thinking we can probably handhold uh, the the implementers there and and construct a graph with slots. Uh, uh, so have a, have a new type of uh, of error that is thrown across a callable binary that includes a slot with the reference to the original error on the other side. So they have a place to look for it and, and, and reference it in, in their own spec, uh, but we don't do a, a, anything with it. And then we explain that you can use this to access stack information of the nested uh, errors. Hey, I, I, wonder, I, I, I'm, I, I want to return to an earlier point in the conversation because I think that we um, missed a unsolvable problem, a problem that's unsolvable uh, given Caridi's framework, um, uh, including error replacing the error constructor or whatever. So yeah, I, 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 saw, I saw that message in the chat. So yes, so you, this one will bypass that. I mean, it, the, the, the stack is placed in that error. We don't know about it. Wait, what? I'm I'm not following what the, the so, problem. Okay, so so in the chat, so let me read it out loud for the recording since the chat doesn't make it to the recording. Uh, try open curly null dot foo close curly uh, catch of e open curly console dot log e dot stack. So the point there is that the error oh. is being constructed by the virtual machine. It's not being constructed by calling the error constructor. Right. Um, the uh, the the stack is then being accessed off of the error instance. Um, if this is if this piece of code is executed uh, in realm B within a call from realm A, 
yeah. then within Caridi's premises, the stack information that is logged to the console will include stack frames uh, from realm A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I say when I say that we implement that and we cover the, all the cases, I was thinking, oh man. <laughs> so yeah. Okay, so that so that's fatal at a much earlier point in the conversation with regard to uh, Caridi's position. Uh, this is not censorable through any of the mechanisms that at the at user level that we're talking about. So either well, it, it's, it, it's 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 either we you know it's censored. Um, you know, either we mandate that it be properly censored, or we're not able to recover. Well, it, it depends on the implementation. Uh, if if stack is a uh, error prototype, uh, uh, if if stack is an error prototype getter, uh, and we nuke that, uh, you can't get it. It okay. depends. It depends on how stack is implemented. That's a good point. That's a very good point. Can you say that again? Can you say that again, Matt? If stack is a getter uh, attached to the error prototype and that gets removed uh, or replaced, you don't get anything out of e dot stack. Uh, right, but that's not the case. It's an own property. That's what is today. That is today. Uh, so, uh, right. So, so just um, today, um, uh, uh, well, the stack property is uh, an accessor on the prototype in Firefox. Uh, and I uh, and I think in Modable, but not in um, uh, not in V8 and not in Safari. In V8, it's going through the prepare stack tray, so we have that route. Yes. And in, in Safari, I actually have no idea <laughs> because <laughs> JavaScript core is weird. Yeah. So what we what we've proposed. So this is where the 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 stack error stack proposal that predates all the shadow realm stuff, where the error stack proposal actually is relevant here, which is we are proposing that stack be standardized as an accessor on error dot prototype and as a configurable accessor so that it can be removed or replaced, um, and. We've proposed that believing that we can get Safari um, willing to change to that. Um, uh, that's based on, I think, previous conversations with, these, with the uh, Apple representatives. Um, so, so if that's still true, if that's still true, then Matthew, your point is accurate. We, we actually could censor even this piece of code within Caridi's assumptions. So I think uh, after looking at this, and then uh, they, I think they, uh, Matthew's proposal is still solid proposal. Well, uh, I'm talking about the one that censor censor the the uh, censor the access to stack from within a realm, um, but from the incubator you can always see the, the entire stack. Um, by looking at this code, this code will have to work at the engine level, not at the callable boundary level. So what we were talking about, the first layer doesn't really, we don't need to do anything at the shadow realm spec in terms of understanding the graph. We can- We give don't have to. There. We don't have to, but we could uh, do something in uh, when an error passes, is thrown across the boundary, but this uh, error doesn't pass the boundary. That's the thing. This error does not pass oh, the boundary. Oh, so you have to do it at the at, at when you construct that error. You need to understand where yes, is that error there, happening. There's two parts. There's two parts. Um, there's the stack about an error that you construct within your own uh, uh, within your own realm, and whether that contains information uh, of stacks of stack frames outside of your realm. Uh, and that should be uh, that should be censored. And then there is the cases of how, what kind of stitching uh, is the uh, host uh, allowed to do on your behalf uh, when a error crosses uh, the boundary. And that's where I'm saying like, we technically don't have to construct a graph. Uh, we could just explain it. 
but it might be easier to create when an error crosses the boundary uh, to, to create that graph so that the engines have something uh, to refer to uh, and it, it would be easier to explain. Okay, so you're saying if the error is crossing, we should be in a position to explain how to apply the censorship there uh, based mm -hmm. on who the no, censorship. censorship is there, how to apply uh, an automatic uh, stitching. I don't know how you un uncensoring the stack traces. Because the stack that would have been created inside the shadow realm would have been censored. It crosses to you. And uh, now you have a new order that, that, uh, that is thrown because it crosses the boundary. Uh, explaining how the engine can stitch information from uh, the error that was thrown inside uh, the shadow realm to capture those stack traces and combine it with uh, uh, the stack of the error that was thrown at the boundary so that you can have a full trace of exactly what happens. I think I understand. I think we're, we're going back to the, the conversation about keeping the internal slot to the original error. That is a cross realm error. You know, mm -hmm. if we, or maybe it's not, maybe implementers will not really keep it an error, but something that can be used to build a stack doesn't have to be there. So we don't have to be, uh, we don't have to. Don't, don't, don't we have error data for that? That, that is, uh, uh... Propagation of error data, maybe something like that. Um, the I, I get that part because you you if you are throwing an error, you don't have a try catch. You're throwing an error two levels down. It crosses the boundary once, and then you might have a try catch there. You capture there. You can see it, but your sensor you see the entire stack all the way down, but you don't see the the stack outside of the realm that you are on, and then you throw it again, and then it crosses the boundary again. And on the outside, you should be able to see the entire thing, three le two levels down and so on. So um, so I, I feel that the, the part on the on the callable boundary is fine. We can, we can do that. We can specify how they can build that graph and specify what we expect in, ter in terms of censorship there. Um, on the other hand, the, the example from Mark, um, we'll have to also put some uh, normative node somewhere in the spec that is not about the call of a boundary. It's not about shadow realm specifically, even though it's or it only applies to shadow realm. But we should put something somewhere uh, because we don't have a stack. We'll have to figure out where to put it. But something that says, well, if the engine construct an error. The stack of that error must be um, the, the 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 error data should be should have the entire information, but the error stack should be built stitched together in such a way that you don't leak information about the outside of that realm, and and then that seems sufficient. So we this is just two two different things that we have to do there. But I feel that with that, without having specified anything about message or anything about um, name of the error or anything specifically about stack, just providing notations about what the, um, not notation, but information about what we expect to be censored and why, uh, no why, but what to be censored. And then that, that seems sufficient to me. I think so. I see yeah. a lot of hand raises. <laughs> um, I have a thought here. This is getting, I mean, there are so many different aspects we've talked about, um, nested, re nested realms, um, realms versus compartments. Um, this native engine example that Mark posed, it's starting to come to me that maybe what we need to do is to think a little differently in terms of how we approach this. Um, I'm inclined to think we might be better off writing a set of tests where we point out suggested answers, but we leave it open in those tests to, to change the answers based on what we arrive at for a consensus. Um, but 
we, we've got to come up with a, a, a pile of examples as tests and not necessarily specify what the correct answer should be, but specify what initial thoughts on those answers should be. Well, the, the thing is that many people don't, don't have a good, uh, even ourselves in this group, which more into these kind of problems, sometimes we make silly mistakes and confuse things. So right. many people don't have intuition about what the error is doing, what browsers are doing with errors and so on. So it's not really about, for me, it's not really about building consensus with a external group, but it's just for us to feel comfortable with whatever solution we're going to propose. Right, and right, this right. One, this one seems to be uh, uh, coherent with some of the intuition that some people has expressed, like Shu saying, from outside, I should be able to see what happened inside. Jordan saying, well, um, if this is for membranes and the membrane should be doing that, well, there's now a justification why the membrane cannot do that. There's an example of why I cannot do that and so on. And then we come up with this proposal that is uh, somehow simple to implement and we have all the pieces in place. So it's, it, it feels to me that we don't have to go around anymore. Like let's just specify that and then in two weeks or three weeks we present it and see what 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 are people thinking about these uh, in the plenary. I think we unfortunately can't write tests uh, because test means uh, you're testing a specified behavior and stack information is unspecified in uh, in TCRA nine. However, uh, what we could do is give examples uh, of what we expect to happen uh, and and take a few examples of those nested cases or. I think I think that's what I meant. Before. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we can do that in the in the explainer. And yeah. add those examples in the explainer and explaining why we are censoring. Um, or not censoring. <laughs> or not, or not censoring. Yeah, why why one side has access and what kind of what what could it see or not? Yeah. Um, right. I think my area of people will be fine with that. I, I think it's yeah. fine. But I, I I think the Mark's example here that he posted in chat and he described verbally, that could blow a big hole in in anything we try to do regarding censorship if we don't think of a how we create these realms in the first place or how we create the compartments in the first place. But unfortunately, that's part of like host extensions. Hosts are allowed to extend any uh, any TCR 9 defined objects and stacks are currently one of them. And um, no, the, I mean, it's, it, that that's, I mean, you know, we're, that's up to TC39, uh, the, uh, the, the current, what hosts are allowed to do is knowingly too broad. Um, so we, we will need to um, narrow that over time. Um, it, Jordan tried something with errors and cause and whether uh, engines, I, let me try to remember, I think engines should be allowed to have a own uh, property or not, or, or or something on the prototype. Anyway, I don't remember the, I, I, exactly the details, but from I remember the uh, the committee's consensus was that implementers are allowed to extend uh, uh, TC39 defined objects, and um, and and well, I think it probably will be a battle to 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 restrict that in any shape or form. When you say that the consensus was, uh, it's it's it clearly can't be a consensus since it's not something I would have agreed with. I think what you, what you meant to say is we didn't we didn't achieve consensus to change it. I guess I will have to check uh, when that was discussed in the last year and a half and uh, see exactly uh, the outcome of the discussion. Mm. Uh, but I think. I think Jordan wanted to put restrictions and uh, enough people were opposed. Right. What that means is we failed to achieve consensus to yes. restrict. That doesn't mean we achieved consensus not to restrict. Correct. <laughs> it's an important uh, we, difference. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we're at 10 minutes to the hour. I'm trying to be sensitive to the people needing breaks between meetings on days where people have meetings back to back. Um, if this is a good place to stop, let's uh, let's go off the record. Does anybody wish to continue? 
All right. Thank you. And so, Sesame meeting.